Parables are meant to proclaim and to reveal to us God's way. Parables are meant to show us what God has in mind, meant to show us what God's plan is when God created the world. And Jesus told parables as a way to confront people when they were not living according to God's plan and to God's way. The parable that we have for tonight is an interesting parable because it's hard to understand exactly what Jesus had in mind when he said it. It's hard to interpret. You can see it in different ways. And even Luke, when he put it into his gospel, he added a little commentary right before explaining what he thought it was. He said Jesus told them a parable about the necessity of praying always and never growing weary in your praying. That's what Luke reads in the parable. And that for sure is a reading. So you have a widow who is persistent and she keeps coming to the judge and coming to the judge because she wants justice. And you have this unjust judge who finally relents and says, okay, I'll give it to her. And especially when you take that, Moses is praying over the Israelites and as long as he holds up his arms, they do well in battle. We don't like the violent image of that, but there's a sense about faith and perseverance. And Moses' arms got tired, so Aaron and Hur came on both sides and they held them up for him. As long as Moses persevered, then the prayer was effective and it worked. So on one hand, a strong message for us tonight, and it's a good spiritual law, persevere in your prayer. Don't give up, don't ever give up, don't ever, ever give up. We keep coming to God again and again and again. But it's important to know why we do that and how we do that. We keep coming to God again and again and again, not because God wants us to grovel. We keep coming to God again and again and again, St. Augustine said, it increases us. Somehow it gets us ready for the blessing that God has in store for us. So sometimes God's no is a way of getting us ready to receive the blessing later. So the good news of that is, God has something good for you out there receive it. That means we have work to do to get ourselves ready to be able to receive God's blessing. God doesn't force himself on us. He respects us way too much for that. But God apparently likes it when we come back to God and come back to God. And then God likes it when we are working to be enhanced, to let our heart grow bigger so that we're ready when God is ready to give us the blessing. So think for a moment. God has a blessing somewhere out there for you and for me. We're not ready yet to receive it, so we have work to do. We keep persevering in our prayer. We keep coming to God. By the way, that's also one of the reasons why we do an annual renewal of stewardship here in our parish. To persevere, and it's good for us to keep coming and keep coming. Last year was our sixth annual stewardship renewal, and just in last year, after six years of doing this, we had over 70 new families who signed up for some new ministry in the parish. If we had never offered a sixth renewal last year, those 70 families maybe would have never found their way to being more active in the church or more active in their discipleship with Jesus. That's also why the church comes to you again and again. We persevere to give you an opportunity to grow your heart and your discipleship. We think that's good for us. So that's one way of reading the parable. There's another way of reading the parable. You see, the problem with the first way is that it compares God to a judge who does not hear the cry of a widow. And everywhere else in the scriptures, it is very clear the cry of a widow. The lame, the orphan, the blind. God hears those cries. So how come this judge didn't hear the cry? Some say maybe a better way to understand the parable is to imagine ourselves as being like that judge. But we're a lot more like the judge than the widow. I mean, think about it. Every day, you and I are constantly making judgments. We make judgments about what I like and what I don't like, what I think is right and what I think is wrong, what I think of other people, whether I like them or not. I make those judgments all the time. And how does God respond to me in that? God is like a persistent widow who keeps coming to me and nudging me and forcing me and challenging me to make sure that my judgments are according to God's justice. God continues to nudge us and challenge us to say uprightness is all over the scriptures. I 
right and wrong. We know what God demands, we just don't always do it. And how does God respond? God is like that widow who persists again and again because God does not give up on us. But also one of the Jewish Talmuds from the time before Jesus says, God cannot be our God unless we are God's witness. That means unless we're standing up for what God teaches us, God cannot clearly be God for the world. So whether that's true or not, I'm not sure, but I do know we need to be a witness for God's justice. God comes to us again and again and again. And we need that. I need that. I need God to challenge me and to push me to keep on living according to God's way and God's plan. A final example is, if God is like that widow coming to us again and again, then that's also what the church is like. Because the church is the sacrament of his Father. That means that the church is called to stand up for God's way. The church is meant to carry God's teaching of right and wrong. And we're called to carry that into a world where there is much injustice going on. Unjust judges, unjust people are everywhere, so the church is called to bring that. Also, in today's first reading, when Moses held up his arms, he couldn't do it by himself, could he? He needed the help. That's why we need church. I can't be a follower of Jesus on my own. I need you to help me. And you need me to help you, and we need each other. Our arms when we begin to fall. We need each other to challenge us to God's way of justice and righteousness. And again, that's why we do an annual renewal of stewardship. Because the church carries again and again a challenge, be a follower of Jesus. Let Jesus' way be your way. Lastly, in our parish family this last week, we had four people who passed over to God, into God's heaven. We had four deaths in our community. Sometimes we'll go a whole month before that happens. And I'm always struck being with families and even being with people as they are preparing to die. When death draws near, everything changes. When death draws near, our priorities become crystal clear. When there's a casket here with our loved ones, it's very clear what is lasting and what is not lasting. What is important, what is not important. What is eternal and what is temporary. And it always strikes me that I spend so much time and energy and all that stuff that doesn't last and all that stuff that is temporary. Why don't I finally get it and focus everything on that which is eternal, that which is going to last forever? Why don't I focus my whole day on trying to get myself to heaven? I get easily distracted by so many other things. Again, that's why we need church, and that's why we come to the Eucharist. That's why we need each other. Christ, we are sisters and brothers. We're in this together. So I guess the challenge, am I being a follower of Jesus? Am I being persistent in my prayer? And am I being consistent in letting God nudge me to stand up for God's justice? So I have work to do this week to let that happen.